Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to this week's bonus episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. On this week's show, we're going to talk about my time on a tractor during my formative years of junior high and high school. And for those that don't know, I grew up on a grass farm in Lexington, Kentucky. And we lived there from about my sixth grade year to 11th grade year. And I call it a grass farm because we were surrounded by horse farms, uh, beautiful horse farms. But our 10 acres we lived on was just grass. And my dad, who you guys know is Big Mike, uh, used to work on a golf course when he was uh, in high school. So he wanted our 10 acres to look like a golf course, and he had great manual labor in me to help him achieve that goal. Um, so we had a Cub Cadet tractor, and from when I was in sixth grade, I got on that big, big old machine, and it would take me about 14 hours to mow that 10 acres. And mind you, our 10 acres uh, was hilly, had trees. You know, five acres were on one side, and there was a creek in the middle that got real swampy, and then there were five acres on the other side, and uh, it took 14 hours without any delay, right? So that meant my weekends were ruined, and, you know, I wasn't as social in junior high, but high school this came to be, you know, a point of contention in our family, and I would try to mow it as fast as I could, still took 14 hours, and, you know, after the 14 hours of mowing, I would then have to weed eat all the trees on our property, probably had about 50. And then I had to mow, I'm sorry, I had to weed eat the fence row, you know, for our, our property. And, um, you know, I hated it at the time, just hated it. You know, high schoolers want to do anything, but, uh, you know, sitting on a tractor for that long. But, um, you know, what I got to do at the time to pass it was to do a couple things. One, I had my Walkman, right? So I had a tape player in there. And also had FM radio, and I just listened to either the classic rock station or the, um, you know, the top forty hits. So from those years, which was about nineteen eighty nine to nineteen ninety four, I knew every top forty song that was out. Right during that time, with my tape player, I, I you know I learned and memorized tapes as well to include Public Enemies, It Takes a Nation a Million to Hold Us Back, the first NWA, which I should not have had at such a young age. Um, Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti, I listened to that on repeat. The Doors, Allman Brothers' Greatest Hits, I love them. And then, you know, the top 40 hits, there, there's songs I hear now, and it takes me right back to that tractor. And, you know, my senior year, we didn't live there because it became such a point of contention of doing all this yard work while I'm also trying to get good grades, also trying to get a basketball scholarship that we actually had to move to the city. Because they knew a year later I'd be moving out of the house, going to college, and they would live long, no longer have their manual labor source. My sister couldn't, just wouldn't be able to do all that I could do on the farm. And it just was, it just was a, it was our biggest issue in our family was the yard. You know, my dad's expectations, what we cared about and didn't care about, and it just got to be too much. So uh, they did end up moving to the city my senior year, which was great. A lot quicker to school. Uh, the yard took me about 45 minutes to mow and um, was much better for us. But I look back, um, and it hit me recently that those 14 hours I spent on the tractor actually was a great thing, right? Toughest years in our life are going through puberty as young men, right? And right then, I was full of hormones, you know, social ups and downs, trying to figure out my future. And I had 14 hours to actually sit on a tractor and think. Now, mind you, I was listening to music, but I wasn't actively doing that. I was also thinking nonstop. And I think about today's generation of youth that do they ever just have the time to think or are they constantly distracted with social media, um, with Instagram reels, with texting, with their phones, with being stimulated constantly? I don't know if they could even sit down for an hour uh, to do mowing, right? Let alone 14. So I've taken a different stance now in my you know, mid-40s to actually be grateful for that time. Um, time to think. I mean, I meditate now for 20 minutes a day. Nothing like the 14 hours I got on the weekend. And sure, at the time, did I get the benefit of it? Absolutely not. It, it took decades for me to actually appreciate it. And, and one of the fun things Big Mike would used to do is, you know, he'd wake me up at 7 on a Saturday, which high schoolers love, and he'd say, I'll mow, but you got to shoot hoop. Shoot hoop in the driveway until you're tired 
and you can hop on the tractor. So 7 a.m., I'm shooting. I shoot for about an hour, and I'm just, you know, there's only so much you can shoot and work out. And I was like, God, I guess I'll get on the tractor now. And uh, so at least he gave me that option. I got a lot of reps up that way. But, um, yeah, so that's um, – that's what uh, that's what <laughs> the 14 hours in the tractor led me to, and uh, the funny thing is nowadays, like the previous yards I've had and all the houses I've lived in, I've really not cared about my yard. I don't want to spend any bandwidth on it. If neighbors looks better, I just want mine to be passable. And now in Colorado with our yard, we have elk in it, deer, a dog. It's just torn to bits, and I I don't mind. It looks like nature to me, and I think that's also what <laughs> those 14 hours a day might have done. Um, is because I put in my time on a tractor and, and making sure yard looked great. Our yard did look great, right? It looked very good. And in fact, we went back to that house over Thanksgiving break to check it out. And whoever lives there now does not keep it up, and it looks it looks just shabby. And I knew, like, man, all that hard work I did, they they don't want to spend that bandwidth either, or spend who knows how much to pay someone to mow it. So anyway, um, would I've had the patience I have now if I didn't do those fourteen hours? I don't know. Would I have been able to handle the military and the mundane tasks that come in life sometimes to get through them without that 14 hours in the tractor? I don't know. But, you know, everything that happens in life gets you to where the point you are now. And that was very formative looking back on it. Once again, I'll say it again. I did not like it at the time. But my goodness, if I could prescribe that to kids nowadays, I just wonder what all that time thinking what that would do to help their mental health and to figure out things and to make new connections. I, I just wonder. So anyway, this was a bonus episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast, just me ranting about, you know, my 14 hours on a tractor growing up for about five years. And, you know, I used to pray for drought. If it rained a lot, I knew that the grass would be thicker. It would be tougher to mow. I would pray for drought. And uh, if we did have a drought, sometimes I'd go a couple weeks without mowing it. It was great terrible to say that everyone needs water for you know crops and everything but that's selfishly what I was thinking about back in the day so um yeah anyway thank you so much for joining um if you like this go ahead and feel free to subscribe to all the major podcasting platforms subscribe to youtube where we've got a lot of great content on there and uh, go to prepathletics.com to sign up for the newsletter to make sure you don't miss anything thanks for joining us on this bonus episode have a great week